book lovers, it is Jisoo is here and I'm here today with my October TBR. <laughs> We are officially in the final quarter of the year, which is exciting, and it's my birthday month as well, so that's also exciting. This month I would like to read just a mixture of things. So I have like some paranormal reads, some reads that I might consider putting in some recommendation videos for this month, and to top it all off, I do want to read a book series by one of my favorite authors because I'm just in the mood to. And as we reach the end of the year, I just want to see whether or not I can add a few more more books slash series on my favorites list and around September slash October is when I start to really look for those picks so I'm definitely gonna try doing that this month. I guess without further ado let's get straight into this TBR. I'll go through the books that I want to read in the month of October and let's see if I achieve them. So I am gonna start off with some manga series that I would actually like to start in the lead up to the end of October. I do want to do some spooky creepy book recommendations and I'm wondering if some of these manga series might be good recommendations for some of the content that I have in October and there's only one way to find out and that is if I give him a try. So first of all I would like to read ZOM 100 volume 1. If you guys don't happen to know Hado Aso the author of ZOM 100 is also the mangaka for Alice in Borderland which is one of my favorite series in manga at the moment and yeah no I should actually consider putting Alice in Borderland on this TBR as well because as much as I do love the series, I'm not yet finished it. And the English translation of the manga is not necessarily like fully out in print yet, but I do have up to bind up seven. So I've got all the volumes but the last four on my shelf, so I should really continue on with Alice in Borderland. But I do want to get a start on ZOM 100 because if you guys don't know, I did recommend Alice in Borderland as a creepy, spooky recommendation last year, and it's one that I still do recommend, but I don't want to be super repetitive with my creepy and spooky recommendations video every year. So I am wanting to try out some new things and I'm wondering whether or not ZOM 100 might just fall under that category. I think this one's a little bit more comedic. However, I am getting some gory vibes from it because this takes place within a zombie apocalypse. So I kind of think it might be an appropriate pick for this month and potentially the video idea that I have. I'm gonna try it out and we'll see how I go. And the second manga series I'd like to get a start on that gives me Halloween vibes is Devil's Candy. I've been collecting this series for a while. I have the first three volumes on my shelf because they have been coming out gradually, but I literally purchased these because I love the covers so much. But yeah, they're giving me some gory vibes, some paranormal vibes as well. I really don't know anything about this. I literally picked these up for the covers, but I do know that these do have paranormal horror vibes. So I think that it might be appropriate for this time period. And I want to see whether or not I would also recommend this in an upcoming video. So stay tuned to see whether or not I would recommend Devil's Candy. And a third manga series I would like to try to start this month. It might not happen this month. I will most likely be prioritizing Zom 100 and Devil's Candy over this one because it's not giving me as many like Halloween vibes. I mean this one definitely has monsters within it but it's giving me more Battle Shonen vibes and I reckon that you can read it all year round. That is Kaiju number 8. I finally want to get started on kaiju number eight. I recently saw the trailer for the anime and I just got so pumped for it. When this manga initially got released in English, I wasn't necessarily like super drawn to it because I've never been like a huge fan of kaiju. However, I am kind of a fan of Battle Shonen and I just wanted the next best thing at the time because around that time I was very much into Demon Slayer and right now I'm reading Sakamoto Days and I really enjoy that and I love getting into like a good Battle Shonen, especially because I find Battle Shonen to be absolutely refreshing. And I mean, there are still others that I read on a regular basis as well, like Mission Yozakura Family and Chainsaw Man whenever that comes out. I like action Battle Shonen. It's fun. So I got pretty curious about Kaiju number 8, and everyone is saying that this is like the next best thing, so I got so interested that I started collecting all the volumes. <laughs> so I'm hoping to get started on this one this month. I don't know whether or not I will include it in a recommendations video, 
video for Halloween slash October, but I'm gonna see if there's like any theme in there that I would recommend for October specifically, but I reckon that Kaiju number eight is not gonna be one of those reads that I'm gonna visit just for spooky season. I'm gonna consistently continue on with it if I really enjoy it. Now the first novel that I have to mention that I would love to read in October actually has nothing to do with Halloween, unless of course there's some sort of Halloween reference in the book, but I doubt it. I'm not going into this book specifically for a Halloween read. Rather, I am going into this book to complete a series, and that, my friends, is Twisted Lies by Anna Huang. This is the fourth and final book in the Twisted series, and I'm so happy I continued on with the Twisted series because I loved Twisted Hate so much. I hear that Twisted Lies is everyone's either least favorite or second least favorite in the series because some reviewers tie Twisted Love and Twisted Lies together, and they love Twisted Games and Twisted Hate. I personally really loved Twisted Games and Twisted Hate, but I also enjoyed Twisted Love, so I'm hoping that I will enjoy Twisted Lies. This, however, is like a 600 page contemporary novel. No, no, not quite 600 pages. It's 550. I'm not necessarily used to a contemporary novel this lengthy. If I ever read romance contemporary, I tend to favor the ones that are around like an average of 350 pages. So 550 is a little bit of a big ask, but I'm going to give it a shot, and a big reason why I want to give it a shot as well in the lead up to the end of the year is because Fairy Loot are doing a special edition set for the Twisted series. So far, after reading the first three books, I am like immediately sold on the series, but I just want to make sure before I purchase the set, or attempt to purchase the set rather, because you know it's a Fairy Loot sale, so some of those can really be a bloodbath. At the end of the year, I want to make sure that I've completed the series and wholeheartedly like it. I mean, I'm pretty sure Twisted Lies is not going to ruin the rest of the books for me because they're all like contemporary romance novels and I'm hearing that the weakest romance in this series is the first one anyway. So I don't think that Twisted Lies is going to be a weak book. However, I am hearing that it's not as good as Twisted Games and Twisted Hate and that does make me nervous because it's longer than both those two. Fingers crossed I get to Twisted Lies in the month of October, but if I don't get to it in the month of October, I at least want to get to it in November because the Fairy Loot sale is in December. So I I have some time to complete this by the end of the year. I've told myself that I can't read any ever Anna Huang books before I complete the Twisted series, just in case any ever Anna Huang book makes reference to the Twisted series. Because the first book in the Kings of Sin series, which was King of Wrath, made reference to the second book in the Twisted series, Twisted Games. You know what? Maybe her other books have made reference to other parts of the Twisted series, and I honestly could not see it. Because at the time I was reading King of Wrath, I had only read up to Twisted Games in the Twisted series. So fingers crossed I get to this, I need to, before the end of the year at least. And the next book I've put on my TBR is a monster romance because they're so wholesome. I just need to balance out my TBR and what better way to do that than just put a wholesome read in there. I have Claimed by an Alien Warrior by Tiffany Roberts on my TBR. Tiffany Roberts are one of my favorite author duos ever. I have loved what I've read from them so far. I've read Escaping Wonderland and His Darkest Craving and those two books I just absolutely adore and I'm wanting to continue on with their backlist, so I decided to pick this one up. I saw this cover and I thought, oh my goodness, it's so cute. I actually had a conversation with my bookish friend a few weeks ago, and we were talking about monster romances and stuff, and I thought she was going to judge me when I told her how many I like really want to read and stuff. And then she replied to me saying that she doesn't judge me at all, because if anything, all the monster romance that she's read, compared to the human and human romance, uh, seems to be a bit more wholesome and respectful. And... You know what? She's right! <laughs> like, based on the monster romance that I've read so far, like, yes, of course, the monsters have, like, animalistic instincts sometimes, but in terms of romantic dynamic, they tend to be a lot more respectful to their human partner than some of the other contemporary romances that we read. <laughs> Which was, um, a very fascinating insight from her. And I kind of think that I'm gonna get those vibes from another Tiffany Roberts book, because I feel like Tiffany Roberts do write very wholesome monster romances, and I find them to be quite comforting. So I put this one on my TBR for October because I just simply want a comforting read because some of the next books I'm going to mention on this TBR seem to be a little bit more intense compared to this one. So I'm going to see Claimed by an Alien Warrior as a palate cleanser. And we are moving on to the more intense reads. So I thought it was quite fitting to add City of Nightmares to my October TBR because City of Nightmares, Halloween, 
it goes pretty well. I had been hesitant to read this book because I saw that there was a dinosaur on the back cover. Yeah, there's a dinosaur here, the flying one. <laughs> I'm terrified of any kind of dinosaurs. I have so many friends who are trying to convince me that they're cute. Um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, no, they're terrifying. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't get it. But you know, like you do you boo. So I am a little bit terrified uh, to go into the story. However, after a few people trying to convince me to read it, they've told me that the dinosaur only plays a smaller part in the book. It's terrifying, but they play a smaller part in the book compared to Jurassic Park. I'm scarred by Jurassic Park, okay guys? However, I'm not gonna lie, City of Nightmares, this book cover, the aesthetic and everything, it's kind of giving me Diviner's vibes. I love the Diviner series by Libba Bray. I read the Diviner series, binge read them this time last year in October and just fell head over heels for them. I will consistently recommend that book series for anyone who is wanting like a good spooky Halloween wreck, but I need to read more spooky, creepy Halloween recommendations so that I could recommend more and not be super repetitive. So I'm hoping that City of Nightmares can help me with that. I hope I like it and I hope I can recommend it to you guys. And I have mentioned this previously on my channel sometime earlier this year. I really want to reread this book in the spooky month of October. And that, my friends, is A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. If you guys don't happen to know, A Dowry of Blood was the first book I read this year and it was also the first five-star book I read this year. I adore the story so much. It is a very intense and thrilling story. I mean, at least it was to me personally. I just loved the vibes, I loved the setting, and I loved following Constanta. I just really want to revisit the story. And I know that it's a hard one to read because it's really about the partners of Dracula or this Dracula-like figure. It was pretty much inspired by the Brides of Dracula, but they're not necessarily just his partners, they're also his victims. And in the story, these characters become survivors. It was a hard read at first. However, it was a very beautiful read. I really loved following these characters the first time I read this book. I just rooted for them so much. It's terrifying, not just because it's a paranormal read, but it's just a terrifying experience because you're witnessing what is going on through the lens of Constanta. And as A Dowry of Blood starts off, Constanta is defenseless and dependent, but she grows to be more strong and independent throughout the story. And it's just something I loved to see, but also it was somewhat terrifying. So I do want to pick it up in October for the terrifying vibes, but I also just want to revisit the story because it kind of means a lot to me. The second last thing I have to mention that I've put on my October TBR is Masters of Death by Olivia Blake. I wanted to save this book for October specifically because of its paranormal vibes. I also want to read this book because I love the books that I've read by Olivia Blake so far, even though I've only really read two. After reading Alone With You in the Ether, I officially decided that Olivia Blake was going to be an auto buy author for me. And I definitely absolutely take pleasure in collecting the beautiful special editions that her publisher puts out. So here I have the Waterstones edition of Masters of Death and I love the pages and the M pages. Oh my goodness, so, so, so pretty. But yeah, I need to read the books that I'm collecting by Olivia Blake because I believe I have like three unread books on my shelf by Olivia Blake and that's not including like the amount of special editions I have for them. Like the Atlas Paradox, I still haven't read. I still haven't read One for My Enemy and I still have not read Masters of Death. So I need to get to it sometime and I'm hoping to get to it in October in the hopes that I can include it in my spooky and creepy book recommendations video because I reckon that the theme is appropriate. I just wanna see how I go with the story in general. Interjection from the future. In my initial TBR video, when I filmed it, I put A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett Sinclair in there because I thought the series was ending this year. Turns out I'm wrong. It actually ends in 2024, so I'm taking that off my October TBR because it's not as urgent. However, recently I've been chatting with my bookish group chat and um, I'm not too sure if we're gonna do a read-along for this, but I was talking to Abby, who is a fan of the Dark Element series by Jennifer L. Armitrout. This series right here, I actually binge read the series two years ago and it got me through a pretty rough time. I really enjoy my binge read of the series. And Abby still hasn't read the Harbinger series, which is a spinoff series that comes after the Dark Element series, but she wants to. And Sash hasn't read any of these books yet. But what inspired our conversation <laughs> was how we were guessing what the next fairy loot set was. And turns out the next fairy loot set announcement recently was the Dark Element series. And even though I feel a little bit conflicted about the Dark Element series, it still makes me feel really nostalgic. I kind of want to go back into the Dark Element series knowing what to expect and just kind of like taking it 
it as it is because I understand that a lot of the series focuses on the love triangle. However, the vibes for Halloween are perfect. So I am thinking of just going back to the Dark Element series and just reading it as a comfort read. I think I just need this comfort read at this time and I really miss Zane and Trinity so much. So I am planning to also add the Harbinger trilogy onto my TBR. I initially was going to read as many Touch of Darkness books as I possibly could, but I want to see if I can get through both trilogies, all six books, within October. But if it doesn't all happen within October, then I'm totally fine with pushing some of it out to November. I don't know if we are planning to do this read a on read along thing because I'm honestly really bad at planning these things and I'm really bad at keeping up with the book community but it was an interesting concept that came up in our group chat and you know what just in case the readathon read along discussion happens I at least want to read all these books just to recap myself especially because I just want to gush to my friends about the series but I also want to rant about it I think there's just so much to gush and rant about when it comes to a good Jennifer L. Armitraud series I I also just want to return to this world. Like, I really miss this world so much. And I know that I am avoiding Fall of Ruin and Wrath, which is Jennifer L. Armitrout's new series. I literally have two copies of that on my TBR. <laughs> And I have not prioritized reading that. At the moment, I am in the mood for some Dark Elements Harbinger action. Because it's Halloween, baby! Anyway, back to past G's Wiz. And last, but certainly not least, the final book series that I've put on my October TBR that I want to read this month. Not specifically because I think that it's scary, because I have absolutely no idea whether or not the story is going to be scary. I just want to read it in the lead up to my top 23 books slash series of 2023, because I am still looking for favorite and this year is not over. The last quarter of this year has only just begun, so I want to see if I can complete the Fallen World trilogy by Laura Falassa. If you guys have not watched me before, hi. Laura Falassa is technically like my favorite author at the moment. She's the author of the Bargainer series, which is my ultimate comfort series. The author of the Four Horsemen series, which is like probably my favorite dark romance series at the moment. And she also wrote the Unearthly series, a book series that I absolutely adored at the very beginning of this year and she wrote Bewitched which was my most anticipated release of this year and I believe that it delivered personally but I have not yet read her Fallen World trilogy and I hear great things about this trilogy I'm hearing that it's definitely one of her best works and I believe that it's a standalone work meaning that none of the other book series that I've read from her so far cross over with the series because majority of the books I've read by Laura Falassa take place within the Bargainer world the only book series that I have read that does not take place in that world from Laura Falassa is the Four Horsemen series. So I really hope that going into a new series in a new world by the same author won't intimidate me as much. Like I'm a little bit nervous to go into the Fallen World series because I feel like the Bargainer world is just so familiar that it can pretty much get me through anything that she puts out. At times, you know, there are slow moments in those books like the Unearthly series or the Bewitched series, but I always take comfort in the fact that they take place in the same world as the Bargainer series. So I am hoping that in these slow moments of the series, I can just soldier on and just remember that at the end of the day, it's a Laura Falassa book series and it might just end off in a very explosive way <laughs> and that I should not underestimate it. So fingers crossed I get to this one by the end of this month and the end of the year and then it makes my favorites list of this year because I just really want another good Laura Falassa series binge read. I really hope I get that in the Fallen World series. <laughs> so I guess that's going to be it for this video today, book lovers. If you happen to stay to the end of the video, leave me the blue heart emoji. And if you happen to enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet already joined the amazing community of book lovers. And also, I have social medias. I'm at Books on Twitter and Instagram, and I'm also Goodreads. That's www.goodreads.com slash gswizzle. And finally, I'm at TikTok. I'm at gswizzle on TikTok if you want to follow me there for some bookish content. I love you, book lovers, and I will see you later. Mm -hmm. All that I would have when I flipped it in a double